My name is Max Feinstein and I'm an anesthesiologist in New York City. A relatively new class of medications including drugs like Ozempic, Manjaro, and Wagovi have gained tremendous popularity for their effectiveness in weight loss. But there are significant effects these drugs can have on patients who are undergoing anesthesia. In this video, I explain what these effects are and why they're potentially problematic. If you find this video interesting or helpful, I'd really appreciate it if you liked it and subscribe to the channel. Let's dive in. Before we get too far, this video does not contain medical advice. Even if it did contain medical advice, this is such an active area of research that in all likelihood, what I'm saying in this video is already outdated by the time you're watching it and there are new guidelines that have cropped up. The class of medications that I'm talking about is called GLP-1 receptor agonist, which stands for glucagon-like peptide 1 receptor agonist. And basically, this is a type of receptor that's present on a number of organs throughout the body. And there are a couple of organs that are of particular importance to patients who are taking the medication, as well as anesthesiologists who are taking care of those patients. Drugs that are in the class of GLP-1 agonists include semaglutides, which you've probably heard of, like Ozempic and Wagovi, but there are also other GLP-1 agonists like liraglutide and ones that I'm going to embarrass myself if I try and pronounce them, so I just put them right here. One of the really important organs that has GLP-1 receptors on it is the pancreas, which is responsible for secreting insulin. Insulin is what people build up resistance to in type 2 diabetes or just don't have enough of in type 1 diabetes. Because GLP-1 receptor agonists cause the pancreas to secrete insulin, it's a very helpful medication for people who have type 2 diabetes. But the organ that's probably responsible for the majority of the popularity of these medications is actually the stomach, which has GLP-1 receptors, and when those are agonized, meaning when those are triggered, that causes the stomach to digest food more slowly and also cause patients to feel more full. The term for the effect of slower stomach emptying is called delayed gastric emptying, and that's what's caused by GLP-1 receptor agonists. There's really robust clinical evidence that patients taking GLP-1 receptor agonists have a 12% lower likelihood of cardiac-related death, heart attack, and stroke. Everything that I'm presenting in this video is evidence-based, and if you'd like to see the studies that I'm referencing, then check out the links in the description below. Shifting gears now to anesthesia, one of the really important principles for anesthesiologists and the patients who they're taking care of is the idea of not having anything to eat or drink before surgery. It's hard to overstate exactly how important it is that a patient has an empty stomach when they're being anesthetized, whether we're talking about sedation or general anesthesia. The short version of it is that anything that's residually in the stomach when a patient undergoes anesthesia can come up the esophagus and then go down the trachea into the lungs causing a potentially life-threatening condition called aspiration pneumonitis. I actually made an entire video about this topic including awkwardly scanning myself with an ultrasound in an empty operating room so if you'd like to check that out you can watch this video right here to get more details about what exactly is aspiration pneumonitis and what do anesthesiologists do to prevent it. Suffice it to say that delayed gastric emptying, meaning food or liquid that's still in the stomach at the time of a patient undergoing anesthesia, can really be problematic. There are now case reports that are popping up of patients who have not eaten for 18 hours or even two days prior to undergoing anesthesia in a procedure, and yet they still had food and liquid inside their stomach. You can check out these case reports for yourself at the Anesthesia Patient Safety Foundation that I've linked right here, which also includes a lot of information about GLP-1 agonists and considerations with anesthesia. The Anesthesia Patient Safety Foundation is a nonprofit organization that advocates for issues related to patient safety and for decades has been a cornerstone in the field of anesthesiology. So check out their website and subscribe to their newsletter if you're interested in learning more. In addition to case reports, there's actually a new study by my mentors at Mount Sinai Hospital who used ultrasound to scan the stomachs of people who are taking GLP-1 agonists and comparing those scans with patients who aren't taking GLP-1 agonists. They found that patients who are taking GLP-1 agonists on average had more food and liquid in their stomach after eight hours of not eating compared to people who aren't taking GLP-1 agonists. I also link the study down below if you'd like to take a look at it. 
based on the mounting evidence for delayed gastric emptying in patients who are taking GLP-1 agonists, the American Society of Anesthesiologists has recently released new guidelines for how to take care of these patients. At the time of making this video, those guidelines include holding a dose of medication prior to surgery, which might mean holding it for one day if it's taken every day, or holding a dose for a week if it's taken every week, but importantly, consulting with an endocrinologist if planning on missing more than one dose. The guidelines also recommend that for patients who did not hold their medications as they were advised, they should have their stomachs scanned prior to receiving anesthesia to evaluate for any gastric contents. If a patient does have gastric contents that are found on ultrasound or even if they don't, but the patient's feeling nauseous or has vomited recently, which can be side effects of these medications, then there should be a conversation about whether it would be appropriate to delay the surgery. Just to drive the point home, any gastric contents that come up the esophagus and go down the trachea into the lungs can lead to a life-threatening condition. So this is not something that anesthesiologists take lightly. If it's found that a patient does have a stomach full of food or liquid, then there needs to be a conversation between the anesthesiologist, the patient, and the surgeon to determine how urgent or emergent the surgery is and what the risks and benefits are of proceeding with surgery versus delaying until the patient's stomach is empty. If you enjoyed this video, you might want to check out this video where I go into a lot more detail about the rationale for not eating or drinking prior to surgery. Thanks very much for watching. I'll see you next time.